Welcome to Lights On Podcast. If you like what you hear, and if you're feeling generous, please rate us five star and share us with others. I'm your host, Mitra Manesh. I'm the founder of InnerMap, a new mindful storytelling and coaching app. I teach at UCLA's Mindful Awareness Research Center, and for the past 35 years, I've been coaching my brilliant clients on four continents, to live, love, and lead more mindfully, peacefully, and joyfully at home and at work. You can find out more about my work by visiting mitramanesh.com. But right now, I'm grateful for your presence and your mindful journey. So your outer currency is your money and your inner currency is your attention. So how you spend your inner currency, which is attention, determines how much assets you have and and how rich you are, but more importantly, how you use what you have, because part of wealth is really the the way you use it, because it's, it's very important how you use or spend what you have. A lot of people are number wise rich, but not energetically. And it's the same with attention. So We talked about attention as an energy, as a focus, as something that we really value, hence we pay attention to. I spoke about attention being the language of the universe. So uh, somebody asked about manifestation and what manifestation is. And I said, manifestation means you're walking in this supermarket of the universe. And by saying, oh, I want to pay attention to this, you're saying, I would like to experience it. Whether what you're paying attention to is something you do want or you do not want, it comes your way because you're paying attention to. Because as I said, attention is the language of the universe. By paying attention, you are saying, this thing is important to me. So we become extremely aware and awake and conscious about what we are paying attention to. And there are two ways we pay attention to what we want, the existence of them or the lack of them. So we have to be careful how we're paying attention to. So I brought a few questions to you. The first one was, what are you paying attention to? Which is a sense of awakeness and awareness and consciousness that I pay attention to what I'm paying attention to. And that's very important. That means I know what I'm paying attention to. It's not accidental. It is not, as I said, the loudest voice in the room. It's not the biggest thing in the room. It is what I choose. So basically, attention, this is what happens. Either things or people choose you and then you pay attention to them, or you are in charge and you choose them to pay attention to. And that's the state we want to eventually be, that we choose very consciously, very selectively as to what we want to pay attention to. Okay, so I'm paying attention to something. And then the question is, with what energy? Who, I brought a second question, who is paying attention to? Because I could pay attention to something and suffer. And you can pay attention to the very same thing and enjoy your time. The difference between, it's the same thing, different people paying attention to, different characters, different aspects of you. So there are many eyes, there are many yous living in you. But in a very general sense, I divided them to three, four categories. The first category was unsupervised mind. That is when we obsessively, without knowing, think about something. And usually when mind takes over and takes charge, it talks about what is wrong. What is wrong with this room? What is wrong with you? What is wrong with my life? What is wrong with me? What is wrong with you? So there is always that question because the work of the thinking mind, the agenda, the job description of the thinking mind is to protect you, to keep you safe. Hence, it needs to identify all the dangers or all the 
potential dangers, things that haven't happened, but they may happen. So it's a great survival thing that we all need to have. Otherwise, we won't survive. But it's a very challenging place to reside and be there all the time because constantly your mind goes to what is wrong, what is wrong, what is wrong, what is wrong. Hence, you live in a state of nervousness or sadness because you're constantly thinking what's wrong. Criticize comes from asking what's wrong. Judgment comes from what's wrong. All these things, side effects or result of asking what's wrong. What is wrong? The answer is, I think this is wrong. And then I go into judgment. You shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be. I shouldn't be doing it. We start shooting things because we are thinking what is wrong. So the third thing. So I said, who is asking? The first question was when you're in your unsupervised mind, then you're always in the survival mode. The second place that we go to is unsupervised emotional self, that we are always vulnerable. We have emotions that are always about to go to somewhere dangerous. And I invited you to bring to your awareness people that you may know, or maybe you are one of those people, and and that's fine. There's nothing wrong because what we're doing is we're just becoming aware of those states. It doesn't mean that we're diagnosing ourselves or other people. We're becoming aware that that state of being is not helpful or hopeful even for our life. When I'm always emotionally vulnerable, I'm about to fall. And what I'm really saying is that you all outwardly need to be careful and create causes and conditions that I can live in then I'm basically completely out of control in my life. I feel bad if you say something wrong. I feel good if you're in a good mood and and you help me. So I'm really at the mercy of people and events. I have no say in my own state. The third character that we would like to connect to more is the functioning adult, or for short, we can just say the adult in us. And I invited you to look at who is sitting at the head of the table and making decisions. Because when the adult is making decisions, when it's time for survival, she can call the survival person to come and help us. Or she can say, oh, please feel these emotions because these are very emotional times. But it's in a healthy, supervised way. It is not out of control. It's not that I'm all over the place. It's not like I don't know what I do with emotions. I do know and I feel them and I name them and I let them go through me and I'm fine with the consequences as difficult as they may be. Please get me right. I'm not saying then you're going to be dancing and singing through life. I'm saying you will be walking through streets of life with a sense of knowingness. You know what's going on. You're not shocked and surprised and at the mercy of others. You are somehow in charge of what's going on. So when the adult is the decision maker, then you can survive when you need to survive. You can feel emotions when you need to feel your emotions and so on and so forth. So I gave you a tool that might be helpful for you. I have made it. It's called STAR, which you refer to as, uh, again, stop and smile, because the smiling, let me give you a bit of reason for that. Smiling takes you out of your surviving mode, because it's an impossibility. If I'm thinking the lion is chasing me, I can stand there and smile at the lion. Say, hi, nice to see you. So when I smile, I immediately come out of that. When I stop, I create a pause there's a good chance I come out of that state. And then taking a breath allows me to connect with my body, come to the present moment. So again, there's another chance for me not to be in those unsupervised modes. And then I tune into my attention consciousness. I know where my attention is. Then I ask the questions that I can ask. I ask who's deciding, who's paying attention, who's present right now. What am I asking? What am I feeling? What am I paying attention to? So I bring a sense of knowingness and consciousness to my life. And then based on that knowing and that observation and those questions, then I reroute 
and decide what I'm doing. Okay, now I'm very good driver of the vehicle of my life. I know who's deciding, I know what's going on, and I even know that it's very challenging. It's not like it's all singing and dancing, but I'm doing it knowingly. Hope this episode answered the question or two for you or provoked and inspired questions in you. I'm so grateful you showed up and listened up. Until the next time, be well and stay curious.